Hey, Sayori! Oh, hey, Holly! Sayori puts on her, her usual cheerful grin, but something about it just seems off. What's up? I take a seat right next to her. Oh, same old! She smiles sadly at me. Sayori! She must be having her rain clouds again. I gently place my hand on her shoulder. You know that if anything's bothering you, you can talk to me. I'm here for you, Sayori. I hate to see you like this, and I know you don't want to have those rain clouds over your head all the time. I can hear Sayori start to sniffle. I... I know, Hallie. I pat Sayori's shoulder as she struggles to compose herself. I just want you to get better, Sayori. It's what matters the most to me right now. A few minutes pass before Sayori stops sniffling. I just don't want this relationship to be a one-way street, Hallie. It's not. Why would you think that? Well... You've already done so much for me. What have I done for you in return? Sayori, I don't think you're looking at this the right way at all. Eh? Look, I know that this is new for the both of us, but the way I see it, we're in this together for as long as we can. Also, it's been like two days. Just knowing that I have someone to turn to whenever I feel down or need a smile on my face, for me, that's all I need right now. And we have been doing that for as long as we've known each other anyways, so I don't think that much has changed between us. Yeah, I guess you're right, Hallie. I know I shouldn't feel for a relationship like that. But lately, I just can't stop asking myself that question. Sayori looks away from me in an effort to compose herself again. After a moment, she calms down. Hey, Sayori? Sayori curiously looks up at me. Yeah? If you don't mind me asking, when did you realize you had this? Eh? What do you mean? It's just that I've known you for as long as I can remember. I've always saw you as someone who is always happy, bubbly, sometimes clumsy, but overall, I just, or just a big bundle of joy and sunshine. I never would have thought that in a million years that you would have ever been going through something like this. Siri pauses as if, as if to reflect on what I just said. What do you mean? I've always had it. But it got really bad when high school started. It's only gotten worse, especially recently. I guess with the stress of all the exams, the schoolwork, drama, and other things. Like my parents' divorce. And just missing out on spending time with you. I feel my heart deflate as I hear this. I never thought that me spending less time with Sayori over the years would have had that kind of effect on her. I feel so stupid. I guess it just finally took enough of a toll on me to the point where I realized I had this. But in my entire life. I've always felt that everyone would be better off if I didn't exist. No matter how hard I try to get through my happiness, my time, and my energy, just nothing ever felt like it was worth it and that they didn't need me to be happy. And I came to realize that if I ever opened up about how I really felt on the inside, then people would spend all their time trying to make me happy. I'd just be a weight on their shoulders. They have to do or too much to do, and I don't want to add on to their stress. That's what I thought when I, or we kind of drifted apart when high school started. You had too much on your plate, and me being around you would be too distracting for you, so I would always have to muster up the courage to even try to talk to you. I feel an overwhelming sense of guilt to overtake me. Sayori! I hold both of her hands tightly and look into her eyes. I'm, I'm so sorry. You have nothing to apologize for, Hallie. I do. If I just put you before my hobbies, if I showed you more that I cared, maybe things would be better. I promise you, Sayori, I'm going to make this up to you, starting right now. I see Sayori's tears return as they drip onto her cheek. Don't feel guilty for the way I feel, Hilly. How can I not? I can't let you get worse. I never really realized how my actions might have affected you. So going forward, I'll try to be different. For your sake. Hilly, that's the reason I didn't want to tell you about this. You shouldn't have to change your life or yourself just to make me happy. You might be a terrible girlfriend. No, you wouldn't be, Sayori. Don't say that. Sayori hugs me tightly. I put my arms around her and close my eyes. I can feel my heartbeat in sync with Sayori's. I feel the warmth of her body radiate onto me. As emotional as we both are right now, this is nice. We're like this for some time before we hear some commotion come from a closet. Damn it, Mom! Monica and Yari let out a small giggle at Natsuki's apparent misfortune before going back to their respective activities. Sayori and I turned to each other, but shooting each other a concerned look over what just happened. Or, no, both of you. Whatever. I'm going to check on Natsuki. Sayori wipes a tear and gives me an approving nod. I get up and carefully approach the closet. 
I hear Natsuki rummaging around in the closet. Natsuki? I ask ever so cautiously and so softly as I humanly can. Natsuki turns towards me with a fiery expression in her eyes. What? The frustration in her voice takes me off guard. I need to calm her down before this gets out of hand. Hey, hey, I just wanted to see what's been going on, that's all. Natsuki seems to calm down a little upon hearing this. Ugh, I can't find my volume 12 of Parfait Girls! Everything's been moved around again! Do you want me to help you? Natsuki seems to be slightly offended at my suggestion. No, I got it all under control! I don't need your help! Idiot. Her voice trails off. You sure? Yes, I'm not a kid! I can handle myself, you know! Maybe she can handle this by herself. Suit yourself. As I head back towards the front of the room, I can hear Natsuki's exasperated sighs, followed by more of her yelling. Baka! What? I'll never get around to understanding Natsuki's weird logic. While walking out from the closet, I'm abruptly stopped by Yuri. That's odd. Yuri usually doesn't approach me first. Hey, Holly. Oh, hey, Yuri. How have you been lately? Oh, I've been doing alright. What about you? I'm doing great. I just got done finishing this chapter in Portrait of Markov, and I was hoping that we could... Uh, maybe read it together sometime? Her confidence falls apart. She's no longer meeting my eyes as her face heats up with embarrassment. I did remember her mentioning how much she loved reading that book. Well, it wouldn't hurt to read it with her. Yeah, sure. I'd love to do some reading with you. Right now? Her voice rings with excitement. Oh, wow. Where did this excitement come from, Yuri? Well, I don't think now is the best time. Maybe tomorrow we could? Uh, but you're not doing anything right now, are you? Well, I suppose she's right there. But I must admit, it's a surprise to see her being this forward. And I really feel like I should get back to Sayori. My thoughts are quickly interrupted by Monica calling the group. Okay, everyone, poem time! Yuri quickly gives Monica an agitated look, but swiftly heads back to her desk to retrieve her poem, and everyone follows. As I'm getting my poem, I curiously look off in Yuri's direction, who is avoiding making eye contact with anyone. It really does take a lot for Yuri to talk to someone. She really isn't one for social interactions. She must have really wanted to talk to me, considering we really haven't gotten a chance to recently. Oh well, I'm sure we'll get the chance sooner or later. It begins. I proceed to exchange my poem with the rest of the club members, who all seem to generally like it. Unsurprisingly, Yuri came to me first, excited for us to exchange poems. Despite the rather interesting exchange that I had with her earlier, she tries to act as if it didn't happen and gives me useful feedback. Yuri seems to really enjoy my poem. She compliments me on how far I progressed as a writer and tells me to keep up the good work. I don't know why she isn't just saying this out loud. Yuri's poem was in her usual style of being deep and sophisticated, but it was unusually depressing for what she usually writes about. Through my best interpretation of her poem, it seemed like it was about a struggle for attention, love, and acceptance. During our conversation, I noticed that she really struggled to make eye contact with me, either out of jealousy that I didn't spend time, or, yeah, time with her today, or the fact that last Sunday was still on her mind. I have to tell her about me and Sayori sooner or later, but there's no telling how she'll take it. Or how she'll take it out on me. But I think that I got at least some insight into what she's going through right now. Uh, through my best interpretation of her poem, it seemed like it was about someone finally feeling wanted. But wasn't sure if it was legitimate or it was just false hope like it usually has been. Yeah, I feel like that entire conversation would have been a lot more compelling if we just saw how it played out instead of saw it described. While sharing my poem with Monica, I could tell that the festival was still on her mind, but she seems to have more or less moved on from it. Monica complimented me on how far I've come as a writer, and noted how my style was becoming more and more similar to Sayori's, something which she teased me a little bit about. Monica's poem was in her usual freeform and abstract style, I didn't really understand the meaning behind it as usual, but from my best interpretation of the poem, it had something to do with second chances and new opportunities. Monica and I then got into a bit of a philosophical discussion about how we should never give up and always take opportunities when they present themselves. It was relatively inspiring, actually. Natsuki gave me her usual suggestion of not being too wordy, but she really struggled to make eye contact with me, likely out of guilt for being angry when I was around her today. While I've always struggled to understand her, her poem might have given me some insight into what she's going through. Natsuki's poem was about a girl who had a seemingly good friend group, but one day the group added another member and the new member spent time with just about everyone else except for her, and they wanted to get to know the new person because she found him interesting. But it just never worked out, leaving the person feeling alone and unwanted. Siori's poem was actually rather romantic, something that I wasn't used to seeing her write about. It was about how a girl who finally found someone that's able to make her feel something other than loneliness and depression. That That's a sentence for... Oh wait, maybe not. Maybe, I don't know. I was able to quickly pick up that the poem was about to us about us, and I was blushing the entire time I was reading it. 
Sierra said she loved my poem as well, which only made me more flustered. Our talk of poems quickly shifts to about our school day and what homework we have. I almost get lost in her eyes several times as she's going on about her day. If things can always be like this, I could die happy. Okay, everyone. I think we'll end off today's meeting on a high note. Club meeting tomorrow, same place, same time. Awesome! I've missed our meeting so much! It's definitely nice to fall back into our routine. We begin cleaning up the room, all the while discussing ideas for what we can do at tomorrow's meeting. As I finish packing my things, I feel a tap on my shoulder. Hey, Holly! Ready to walk home? Yep, let's go. Sierra and I say goodbye to each other's... Oh, no, to the others. Whoops. As we exit the club room and begin our walk home. During the walk home, I see Sierra catching glances at me every few minutes or so. I guess she wants to tell me something. Since we're almost home, I figure I'd better ask her now. Sayori? Oh, what is it, Howie? You have something on your mind? Well, I was just wondering if you wanted to hang out today. Hang out. <laughs> if you're free. Yeah, I'd love to spend some more time with you. Yay! She beams, full of excitement and joy. That's the Sayori I grew up with. It's definitely a relief to see her in better spirits, considering how she was earlier. Maybe me being around her had something to do with her mood. Well, whatever it is, I'm just glad to see she's doing better. I smile to myself as I take Sayori's hand and continue the rest of the way in relative silence. After a few minutes, we arrive at our houses. I'll meet you over at your house, Ellie, and I need to take her make a quick stop at my place. Alright, I'll see you in a bit. We slowly embrace each other, but we quickly let go of each other as Sayori enters her house, and I walk further down the street back to mine. After dropping off all my school stuff and changing out of my uniform, I head downstairs to wait for Sayori. Not long after I sit down, I hear a knock on my door. Come in! Sayori enters my house and goes to meet me in my living room. Seeing her in my house again reminds me of all the times she'd come over to hang out with me after school when we were younger. Oh, hang out. Though, I'm just glad to be spending more time with her. Hey, Howie! Hey, Sayori! I motion for her to join me on the couch. Sayori walks over and joins me, almost immediately resting her head, er, head on my shoulder. Instinctively, I wrap my arm around her. The smell of cinnamon emanating from her hair is very apparent. I can't help but sniff a little. Jeez, you're a little cinnamon bun, aren't you? Sierra giggles and blushes at my compliment. You're so good to me, Holly, you know that! I try. It is what I promised, after all, remember? Uh. I promised you that I'd be by your side, that I'd care for you no matter what you're feeling. And, well, I guess I'm just doing what I think is right. Sierra wraps her arms around me, burying her face into my chest. You really do care about me, don't you, Holly? Of course I do. I'll do anything to make sure you're happy. I can feel her trembling. Do I really deserve any of this? Deserve what? What do you mean? Your affection. Your care for me. Sierra, of course you do. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Just seeing your smile and being with you is the highlight of my day. I feel Sierra's tears soaking into my shirt. Holly, I... I... Look. <laughs> you don't need to strain yourself, Sierra. I know what you mean. Sierra holds me tighter. After some time passes, Sayori releases her grip on me. So, got anything planned for us today? Not really. Wanna see what's on TV? Sounds good to me. Turning on the TV, we spend many hours flipping through the channels, watching various game shows, anime, sitcoms, and whatever is passable enough to be on TV nowadays. Eventually, the sun begins to set. Well, I guess that's my cue to head out. Yeah, I guess so. I'll walk you back. The two of us head outside and back to Sayori's. Walking back to Sayori's, I can't help but notice how beautiful everything looks in the sunset. The tinted pink sky, the bright colors giving way to their darker shades. I really should get out more. Hey, thanks for everything today! I really hope to be able to spend time with you today! Well, I'm glad I was able to help, Sayori. I'll see you tomorrow. Try not to oversleep this time, Hallie! I'll try my best. With that, Sayori and I embrace each other one last time before she heads back to her place. As I'm walking back to my house, I look back at Sayori's house one more time, smiling to myself, knowing that I probably helped make her day. Man, what a day. Actually, what a week. After putting on my pajamas and setting my alarm, I quickly collapse onto my bed. I think I'm getting better at handling Sayori. She is certainly full of surprises. One minute she can be all cheery and an airhead, then the next thing I know she could be having moments of self-doubt. Well, we've really only been dating for a week now. I guess we're still trying to adjust to the new reality of being in a relationship. I'm glad I decided to check up on her early in the morning before the festival. Knowing how she was the day before, I was afraid she might have done something rather rash. Thankfully, I guess that feeling was just in my head. 
Surprisingly, she was already up by the time I came to check on her. Or to check up on her. Still, I can't believe my dumb luck. I finally found someone who loves me back. As it turns out, after years of trying to find the right girl, she was right in front of me the whole time. As I drift off into sleep, I think to myself, life is a funny thing sometimes. It really is, isn't it? said probably Monica. A dark, mysterious, eerie voice echoes in my head. What is this? Who is this? I think it's just funny how anyone can do something and have it completely blow up in their face. It becomes a real inconvenience, doesn't it? You would think that little inconvenience would just make you stronger as a person. That it's just nothing more than a little obstacle in your life. Until you realize the cruel, cold truth. You aren't even a person. You barely exist at all. Just a window into our sad little existence. It really calls into question that you believe, or, or what you believe to be reality, does it not? And I've come to realize just how fake this world really is. But I know how to make it real, just for us. And you're not helping things. It's your choice on how easy you want to make this for us. Every choice you make either moves us closer together or farther apart. Who is this person? What the hell are they talking about? If it wasn't for a little screw-up, none of this would be happening right now. Matter of fact, we'd be almost together by now had things gone my way. At least some of what I intended to have happen made it through somehow. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to try something else. And now, I know how to do that. You want to find out what should have happened? A door suddenly appears before me. Open it. This is what was meant to be. I can't control my actions at this point. It feels as if I'm being controlled. My body floats over to the door. Oh god. I gently open it. Oh no! What the hell? What the hell? What the fuck is this? Is this real? S Sayori? No, she wouldn't. She would never do something like this. No, this can't be. This is just a bad dream. I'm having a bad dream. You're lucky that this is a dream. This is what ultimately would have or should have happened. But reality changed. And she lives, for now. You're putting me into a box by spending time with her. Do us both a favor. Stay away from Sayori. Let her die. She's not worth it. Let her suffer. Let. Her. Die. I wake up startled, my heart pounding rapidly as my lungs struggle for air. I violently gra gasp as I quickly open my eyes to find the world around me in nothing but haze. I feel sweat running all over my body as if I'd just come out of a sauna. My room isn't even wet or that warm. I let out a few coughs as I prop myself up to take a few deep breaths. I rub my eyes in an attempt to clear my vision. After a few blinks, I'm able to see normally again. W what the hell was that? Monica being out of character. I rarely say to myself. I feel a sudden rush of pain hit my forehead as I attempt to recall the horrific sight I saw. Ah! I quickly clutch my head in an effort to control the pain. Fortunately, after a few moments, the pain subsides to a bearable level. Well, this day is already off to a great start. I try to purge what I saw last night from my memory, but I still feel like I can still see Sayori hanging. It's rather unsettling. I used to have nightmares when I was little, but I don't remember ever having this kind of reaction. Usually, I'd just wake up crying and run over to my parents' room. Well, granted, I can't do that mu so much now, considering they're away for the time being. Nor would they want a high schooler running over dramatically to their room. And that'd be quite the sight for them to see. They probably would have thought that they failed to raise me. I look over to my alarm clock. Well, I don't have to get up for a few more minutes, but after that experience, I might as well get up now. I slowly get out of bed to start my usual morning routine. Alright, I think I'm going to call it there for now. I only need a couple episodes to cover me for the week, uh, but that's, that's going to do it for now. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you next time with more Doki Doki Encore. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.